Hello friends, let us now learn some important points about the cholidocal cyst. Cholidocal cyst is cystic enlargement of bile duct. The common bile duct starts to enlarge and that is called as cholidocal cyst. Cholidocal cyst is a congenital condition which is most commonly seen in females more than males. And if first we will see the classification. The classification we call it has Todani classification of cholidocal cyst. So in this Todani classification, if you see type 1, there is fusiform dilatation of uh, common bile duct. So this, this is right and left hepatic duct, common hepatic duct, cystic duct, gallbladder and this is common bile duct. This is the fusiform dilatation of common bile duct which you see. That is type 1 of Todani's classification. In type 2 or type 2 of Todani's classification, there is this saccular dilatation. This is the saccular dilatation which you see in type 2 of Todani's classification. Then type 3 is intraduodenal segment dilatation. So this is the intraduodenal segment which undergoes dilated. So this is the intraduodenal segment which undergoes dilatation in the type 3 with cholidocal cyst. Then type 4 cholidocal cyst can be divided into 4A and 4B. In 4A there is both intrahepatic dilatation is seen and there is also extrahepatic dilatation of common bile duct is seen. Intrahepatic dilatation of the biliary apparatus and extrahepatic dilatation of biliary apparatus is seen in type 4a. Then in type 4b the intrahepatic it is completely normal. Whereas there is only and only extrahepatic dilatation of common you know the biliary apparatus is seen in type 4b. And in type 5, there is only intrahepatic dilatation, whereas the extrahepatic dilatation is absent. That means the extrahepatic part of biliary apparatus is completely normal. Right? So, this type 5 cholidocal cyst is also called as Caroli's disease. Then, the main uh, in abnormality which we see in Caroli's disease is the improper or abnormal canalization of bile duct is seen in Caroli's disease. In sorry, in cholidocal cyst. In all the cholidocal cyst, there is abnormal canalization of bile duct. And there is also anomalous pancreatic biliary junction is also seen. So because of these both these hypotheses, one thinks that these are the causes of cholidocal cyst. So if you see the clinical future features of cholidocal cysts, there are two one-liners which you have to remember. The most common symptom of cholidocal cyst in infants it is jaundice. In infants, jaundice is most common. But in children who are more than 2 years of age, the most common symptom is pain abdomen. But most common age of presentation is obviously infants. So cholidocal cyst is most commonly present in infants followed by children. Here the patient presents with obstructive jaundice, pain abdomen and even one can present with mass abdomen which is seen to the right above the umbilicus and this mass which is seen is smooth and soft to palpate and this mass does not move with respiration and it is non-mobile. So this is the mass which is seen in the right upper quadrant. Then there is a triad of cholidocal cyst that is the triad includes jaundice, pain abdomen 
and the palpable mass is the triad which is seen in cholidocal cyst right now what are the complications of cholidocal cyst in this picture you can see the cholidocal cyst so whenever there is cholidocal cyst there is infection can come can see because of in this cholidocal cyst here mostly if you see there will be stasis of bile and because of this stasis of bile this will in uh, attract infections and the infections uh, this will attract the infections and this will result in suppurative cholangitis suppurative cholangitis is infection of biliary tree and which results in pus formation this infection can even spread to the pancreas if it spreads to the pancreas <clears throat> it results in pancreatitis and because of this stasis of bile it will result in bile stone for sorry gall stone formation this can result in gall stone formation and sometimes stone can even form in common bile duct that is called cbd stone formation can occur sometimes this cyst which is present it might rupture and because of that rupture all the contents in the cyst will uh, leak into the peritoneal cavity so whenever there is rupture of cyst this will result in biliary peritonitis that is there will be inflammation of peritoneum due to the bile contents in which are accumulated in the peritoneal cavity and this common whenever uh, there is col cholidocal cyst there is increased risk of cholangiocarcinoma also right so these are the different complications which we see due to um cholidocal cyst then if you see the investigations the best investigation which we do is mrcp mrcp is the investigation of choice for cholidocal cyst and on usg or ct scan we can see the central dot sign the central dot sign is seen in usg and ct scan this mrcp is investigation of choice and here we can see the status of this biliary system and also pancreatic system pancreatic duct and also we can also see the pancreatic and biliary duct junction which is mostly anomalous in these patients so these are the investigations so if we come to the treatment the treatment of cholidocal cyst depends upon the type of cholidocal cyst in the first type which is fusiform variety of cholidocal cyst uh, and also the saccular variety of cholidocal cyst that is in both type 1 and type 2 we can do a procedure which is called as raw and white hepatico jejunostomy we can do raw and by hepatico jejunostomy followed by jejuno jejunostomy is done so if you see this is the normal gall bladder and this is the saccular dilatation because whenever there is cholidocal cyst there is increased risk of cholangiocarcinoma and also gall bladder carcinoma so we will resect this part of the cyst along with the gall bladder and then after resecting the part of cyst along with the gall bladder we will anastomose it similarly uh, similar to that see here what we do is we will take this and uh, here we have one minute i will just draw this so that how we will we get this this i'll draw see this is the duodenum okay this is the duodenum and the rest of the segment and here we have a ligament which is called as treats ligament attached to the, th the third part of the third to fourth part of duodenum and from the treats ligament we will count 
the 75 centimeters so we will measure the 75 centimeters and we will divide it okay so this is the proximal part this is the distal part this distal part which i am moving I mean putting with blue this is anastomosed with this part of hepatic duct this here it this distal part is anastomosed with the hepatic duct common hepatic duct once you anastomose the jejunal part with the hepatic duct this is called hepatico jejunostomy so have you have you have anastomosed here and the, in the from the proximal part this uh, duodenum with the 75 cm of jejunum here this proximal part you will suture it off and in the distal end of this is attached to the jejunum nearest jejunum okay so that is this is jejunum you are anastomosing with jejunum so this is jejuno jejunostomy so this is rocks and why technique which is done for hepatico jejunostomy and jejuno jejunostomy this is done for type 1 and type 2 right next the second procedure which is done for type 1 and type 2 is colidoco cysto duodenostomy colidoco cysto duodenostomy is also done in this you will open the cyst colidocal cyst okay you will open the colidocal cyst and you will also open the uh, duodenum part and you will anastomose both of these you are anastomosing this colidocal cyst to the duodenum so that all the secretions which are which come will now drain through this anastomosed part but here the problem is there is increased risk of ascending cholangitis risk is increased in this colidoco cysto duodenostomy right next next if you see the type 2 only for type 2 we have one more procedure for type 2 not for type 1 see these two procedures can be done both for type 2 and type 1 but this procedure is mainly done only for type 2 so in this you can excise the diverticulum with the gall bladder you have excised the diverticulum with gall bladder and now you have uh, just left this part and you have inserted a t tube this is a t tube which you have inserted it and this t tube will helps in healing of these two ends once the healing of these two ends occurs so you will suture this common bile duct completely once the drainage stops and everything becomes normal then you can do final suturing after removing the t tube okay so this is the second procedure here you are excising the diverticulum and then you are putting the t tube that is you are inserting the t tube and then you are also suturing the common bile duct this is done only for type 2 then if you see we have type 3 type 3 here this is intra sphinct intra duodenal dilatation of common bile duct is seen in type 3 colidocal cyst here you will have to do stans duodenal sphincterotomy you will just give an incision here and thus you will help in drainage of the contents this is trans duodenal sphincterotomy which is done by endoscopic retrograde cholangio pancreaticography here you will introduce an endoscope in through the esophagus into the stomach then to the duodenum and then you will make a small suture see if this is the uh, dilated part you are just making a small suture over it so that the drainage occurs easily so this is intra trans duodenal sphincterotomy which is done in type 4 part in type 4 we have intra hepatic and extra hepatic dilatation so here if it is a localized disease that is involving only the one lobe you can do lobectomy but if it is involving the whole of the liver then you should go to liver transplantation okay so this is about the coli docal cyst treatment thank you guys for watching my lecture thank you